Welcome everyone to the special remote commission meeting. Today's August 19th, 2021. Port of Olympia is continuing to work diligently to address the threat posed by COVID-19 to Thurston County, the state of Washington in the United States. On March 20, March 16, 2020, the commission adopted resolution 2020-03, authorizing certain emergency powers in light of the COVID-19 outbreak, including invoking applicable emergency exemptions to meeting notice requirements and location restrictions of the Open Public Meetings Act. Pursuant to that resolution, the Port of Olympia Commission is conducting today's meeting remotely. The Port is following the guidance from the Thurston County Health Department to take all efforts to prevent the spread of this virus and is acting in the interest of the safety and welfare of the public, the community, and our employees to limit its spread. Well, Commissioner McGregor, would you like to uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance today? Absolutely. Thank you, Commissioner. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we have an agenda. Do I have a motion to approve today's agenda? So move. Is there a second? I second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, commissioners. So the first uh, next item on the agenda is public comment. And I have a little snafu this morning. I don't have the list of requested people to speak in written or sorry, verbal public comment. Uh, Tracy, do you have that list handy? I, I do. We have Wayne Olson and Helen Wheatley. Uh, thank you. I'll just write that down real quick. <clears throat> So we're going to start with those two folks, and then I'll ask for other people on the call if they'd like to give public comments. So with that, I'd like to open up the floor to Mr. Wayne Olson. Wayne. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, Commissioners Downing, Zeta, and McGregor. My name is Wayne Olson. I'm a resident of Lacey. In view of your impending decision to lease the a 200 acre parcel of New Market Industrial Park to a developer, I strongly recommend that you include in the development agreement a section which requires that any construction of warehouses and other large footprint buildings on this parcel include solar photovoltaic systems for electricity generation on the roof. This equivalent to a solar farm could and should be sized large enough to totally offset the loss of carbon sequestration when a mature forest on this parcel is replaced by concrete and otherwise wasted flat warehouse roof space. You and the other parties to this development agreement can all be our heroes by implementing this recommendation. The port will succeed in completing this lease and have the eventual revenue flow. The developer or whoever pays the upfront cost of the solar installation will reap the benefit of essentially free electricity for the 30 or 40 year life of the system, rapidly pay down on their capital expense, plus receive whatever federal and state incentives exist at the time. And the occupants of the buildings will likely have much lower electricity bills to pay the developer. And Puget Sound Energy will gain extra credits toward their required goal of fossil fuel electricity production by 2045. This is truly a win-win-win, since the solar installations will likely produce more electricity than the occupants consume and more than offset the loss of forest sequestration. This should make us tree hugger constituents of yours happy. I am sure you are aware of the benefits of solar installations, since you mentioned in your website of your 2013 solar installation at the port. And as you mentioned, price of solar panels have plummeted 70% or more since that time. I have a similar experience from installing a 7.4 kilowatt system with 36 solar panels on my former Bonnie Lake home in 2015. The system averaged a production of about 11 megawatt hours annually, 
versus my family's consumption of eight megawatt hours, enough left over to charge an electric vehicle for about 10,000 miles annually, if I had one. With net metering, essentially no electricity bills, saving about $1,000 annual on electricity. With incentives at the time, my installation was paid for itself in less than five years, plus the bonus of free electricity for another uh, expectation for 15 to 25 years at less than 1% degradation of production annually. With a 1 million square foot warehouse, just think of the thousands of gigawatt hours that could be produced annually. I'm not sure, but would that be called a few terawatt hours? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Uh, next we have, uh, I believe, Dr. Helen Wheatley. Ms. Wheatley. Hi, um, I, I have a question. Um, my comment is on the um, the uh, the ILA development agreement. So should I wait until the advisory comments for that rather than comment now? Well, thank you, Ms. Wheatley. Well, Dr. Wheatley, you have the floor, and you may say the same thing twice if you choose. <laughs> um, I, you know, it's up to you really if you. Yeah. Uh, Want to make a comment at this time and uh, okay, whatever you feel is best. Okay, thanks. Well, I will just go ahead then. Thank you very much. All right. Generally speaking, a development agreement should include the developer. I can see the Port of Olympia making a development agreement with Panatoni, for instance. That would be the normal way. But according to Mr. Rowe, the party needing assurance in this case is the city of Tumwater, which is not the developer. So I think you have the wrong instrument here. Tumwater is not a party to the consent form signed with Panatoni. And I also have questions about the relative costs of default for different parties. You do already have a new market industrial campus real estate development master plan developed with Tumwater at a public cost of well over half a million dollars. You should use that to work together flexibly and creatively to achieve the public good as the land is developed. The port made a mistake and signed the ground lease with the developer that ignored the real estate master plan, and this agreement doesn't really fix that mistake. Meanwhile, through this agreement, the port is promising to pay still more to subsidize mitigation for Panatoni, and the port has already promised that the public will pay up to a million dollars in pocket gopher mitigation. So why promise to give away more? Panatoni isn't threatening to leave. And anyway, it might be better if it did, the port could then seek a deal consistent with the real estate master plan, the urban forestry plan, and whatever the gopher mitigation plan ends up being. The only case the port has made for the Panatoni deal is to cook up a bunch of unverifiable numbers based on unknown data and undisclosed formulas, which is to say nonsense numbers, at least at this point. Finally, it has to be said as far as the community center goes, this is a bad deal for Tumwater. It forces Tumwater into what is possibly the least developable land. And even if it were ever to get a permit, the city would be making a big investment while subleasing from Panatoni, not leasing directly with the port. And this agreement actually requires Tumwater to express its public gratitude to both the port and Panatoni. So, you know, please, how did that end up in there? Don't sign this. It's the wrong instrument and the terms are maybe more insulting than assuring to your government partner. Find a way to work with Tumwater that doesn't start with demanding that Tumwater give up its rights and grandfather in Panatoni and the port. Just because the port made a bad deal doesn't mean that Tumwater should. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Wheatley. So at this time, uh... We don't have anybody else signed up for public comment, but I'd like to see if there's anybody else that'd like to give public comment at this time. Um, also, there will be another opportunity, as Dr. Wheatley pointed out, to give public comment on these today's agenda items. So your choice, if you'd like to uh, give public comment at this time. Actually, though, the uh, public comment right now is any issue facing the port, not only uh, the subject at, on today's meeting. So is there anybody else that lived like to give public comment. We do, we have several hands. I'll start with Deborah Pat Patton. Uh, thanks for your help, Tracy. Uh, Ms. Patton, uh, please go ahead.
We can't hear you, Ms. Patton. I didn't, I didn't mean to have my hand raised. My apologies. Oh, I'm just, I'm just listening. I'm sorry. No problem. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Patton. Um, how about uh, Lee Reiner? She's got a hand raised. Lee? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please go ahead. Okay. Yes, thank you. Um, I know this discussion on this Patatoni agreement has been a long time coming. Um, many people have weighed in and many of us were disappointed that the Port of Olympia went ahead with this agreement um, some time ago with Panatoni. Um, many of us have friends who have children in Bush Middle School and Bush Elementary School in Tumwater. Um, having this huge uh, warehouse development proposal near the elementary school is uh, unconscionable to many of us. Um, we love Tom Water uh, with all our hearts. We've been here for uh, 30, 40 years and uh, to have the fabric of this uh, development placed here is um, unconscionable. But as the last speaker said, um, the RCW, the lease agreement needs to be reviewed uh, by legal again. I don't see how you can approve this agreement um, when, again, you uh, don't even have Panatoni's name in it, the Port of Olympia uh, is the, the, the leaser, and that, to many of us, does not make sense. Uh, this is not fair. Uh, many of us got involved in the master plan, new market master plan discussion in 2015. It seems like you threw that all out with baby in the bathwater, and um, and now you're going ahead with this. Um, many of us commented on the 2015 port master plan uh, for new market, and um, you're no longer going along with what the master plan said. You're allowing uh, Panatoni to come in here. Um, many of us don't want as taxpayers to uh, subsidize Panatoni to get the pocket grow for mitigation. Many of us don't want to subsidize Panatoni to change the roads over there next to Bush uh, School. Um, I just don't understand how we can allow this to go forward. I, I kind of wonder why the Port of Olympia is rushing to get this in place. Uh, we're having an election. Uh, many candidates are talking about this and we're just kind of wondering why the current uh, Port of Olympia is rushing, rushing to get this in place. When um, we're having candidates, we're going to have an election. Maybe after the election, our our new set of candidates can make the decision and go forward on this. Uh, but at the very least, the legal is going to have to review this because uh, there are quite a few loopholes and uh, incorrect wording on this uh, regarding the RCWs uh, relating to this development agreement and how it is formulated. Uh, we many of us believe it's incorrectly applied. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reiner. Uh, next person with a hand up I see is uh, Mike Pelly. Uh, Mr. Pelly, would you like to speak? Yes, thank you, hear me? can you hear me? Yes, I can, yes we can, okay, thank great. you. Thanks. I'm gonna read what I had written and prepared. As a 32 year Thurston County resident, I wish to express my disapproval of the Panatoni deal. I, I oppose this development for numerous reasons. I include that traversity of ecological destruction it will, it will create at a time of unprecedented global and local climate instability. We need to be preserving wild spaces in our ever increasingly populating county and region. I oppose this development because it makes negative economic sense to build another industrial park out of virgin forest land when Thurston County already has an abundance of vacant commercial and light industrial sites, strip malls, and miscellaneous other former commercial sites that can be redeveloped instead. Perhaps the Port and City of Tumwater might consider turning this unspoiled green belt into a land trust nature preserve with public access, look elsewhere for a more fitting option, and the Port of Olympia commissioners please quit selling Thurston County taxpayers and residents short 
while locking us taxpayers into higher taxes on boondoggle projects because of poor economic decisions. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pelly. Uh, is there anybody else that would like to give public comment on any item facing the port? Uh, Commissioner, uh, Judy Barton had her hand up and uh, I, I see it's down now, but I think she's in as part of the panelists, so she might have a comment. I'd like oh, to thanks. comment, if I could. Uh, Ms. Barden, uh, please go ahead. You have the floor. Okay, um, this is Dr. Judy Barden, and I used to work in air quality and health. And so my comments are related to that. And um, I really want to comment on the truck traffic that will be gener generated by this development agreement. My main concern is diesel exhaust. Diesel exhaust is a known human car carcinogen. It causes lung and bladder cancer. Um, and also the fine particulate matter in diesel exhaust is linked to heart and respiratory diseases, including asthma in children. Diesel exhaust comes from the combustion of diesel fuel by trucks. It's a combination of fine particulate matter and we've seen fine particulate matter in smoke and the health concerns with those as recently in Washington, as well as more than 40 substances that are listed as hazardous pollutants by the EPA. And the Department of Ecology has ranked diesel exhaust as their highest priority in terms of air toxics um, because of its potential cancer risk. So my concern is really the increased truck traffic through the community and especially um, the school. And um, there may be some rerouting, routing of roads. We don't know that yet, but this potential to expose our community to this dangerous pollutant should really be looked at. The other thing is I wonder if anybody um, is going to be requiring clean diesel technology for the trucks that come into our community, or are they going to be older diesel trucks? Um, has anybody contacted ORCA, the Olympic Region Clean Air Agency, to get their opinion of this proposal and the impacts to the community? So those are just some of the questions. Has anybody done any modeling or does, are there any estimates of the amount of truck traffic that will be generated? I think this all, these are all questions in the material that I saw that was presented. Um, I don't think there's any estimates of the amount of truck traffic. So I think the community has a right to know that and that we should know what the potential health impacts might be from this increased truck traffic. So thank you for letting me speak. Thank you, Ms. Barden. Okay, um, is there anybody else that'd like to give uh, public comment of a general nature here at the beginning of the meeting? Uh, I'm seeing, I'm seeing- uh, Carl Wolfsburg, Sue, Sue Donner, Amber. Yeah, okay, Carla, Carla Wolfsburg, uh, please go ahead. Uh, can you hear me? All right. Yes, go ahead. Oh, Got, gotcha. Great. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, first of all, I just want to make a note that um, I was only able to read the interlocal agreement or the development agreement starting Tuesday night, and this is Thursday morning at 10 a.m. So this is not a lot of time uh, that you have offered us, the public, to really scrutinize this report. Um, so I don't know if that was intentional, but it certainly makes it uh, a burden on the public to, to make a, a reasonable public comment in such a short amount of time. Plus, we're meeting at 10 in the morning, which I think eliminates a lot of people who might have wanted to attend this uh, live public meeting. Um, they're working people. So um, my objections are, are significant, uh, but since I have a limited amount of time, I just want to direct... Um, your attention to the section seven of the agreement. And it's uh, the relocation of Kimmy Street, the trail and the design of the trail. And these are all um, 
uh, expenses that the port is undertaking rather than the developer. And the port basically is the public, it's us, the taxpayers. So we are basically paying for these rather large expenses, but we don't even know what those expenses are. So I want to know, has it been estimated what the cost of relocating and redeveloping Kimmy Street is going to be? These are fairly big ticket items. Um, and there's also, of course, the, uh, the, uh, the cost of the uh, mitigation issues and that I, be I believe is under the um, the H uh, let's see the HCP so that would be section 9 and I wanted to know what the what the cost of this might be um, and the public is bearing the cost of this the port ie the public and I don't think that we have had enough information to know what this will cost us and I think this is very important I'm also very uh, very uh, I'm clear about how much of the tree canopy is is going to be taken away. There's a section to the east of the school, which is a very big chunk um, that looks like it's going to disappear. And I think that that was one of the main concerns was to keep a big buffer around the middle school. So, so those are just a few of my concerns. I will write these up um, and submit them in a written format. But um, that's what I would like to to mention to you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wolfsburg. Uh, next, we have uh, Sue Danver. Sue? Hi. Can you Hi. hear me? Yes, we can. OK. Um, um, I didn't anticipate um, speaking at this time. Uh, my timing was confused by your releases of when and what can be said. Um, so this is ad lib. Black Hills Audubon Society did a study of the Tumwater Warehouse at 93rd and the water um, resolution from large areas over a million square feet, probably more too when you add the parking lot on the environment. Uh, and all that information is pertinent to this um, uh, Panatoni development. Basically, uh, a hydrogeologist wanted more information from Tumwater. This is in the Salmon ba uh, Creek Basin, which has terrible flooding situations. So we're worried about increased impervious surface um, at the airport um, in your plans, although you, I don't believe you have a, a development plan yet, so we can't really comment on that. Um, and so we could have an increased flooding. So we look what's downstream of the airport and it is the Black River area um, and even the Beaver Creek area where there are extensive wildlife areas uh, and land trust areas and state and county and uh, what else? Uh, national wildlife refuges. Um, increased truck traffic will um, increase pollution onto the impervious surface and in any rainfall that could end up in the Beaver Creek, especially in a flood situation. And um, recently uh, they have identified the the um, chemical that causes death to coho salmon, which there has been great effort by um, the Chehalis tribe and by um, various uh, national groups and state groups and county groups to protect the coho run on the Beaver Creek and which goes into the Black River and the Chehalis. Um, this kills the coho adults um, so the um, young don't survive. Um, this should be um, inc incorporated in your thoughts and your decision on the Panatoni area. Um, it would be nice to know what the development is that has not occurred. And it seems like the um, Tumwater, if I re recollect this is a guess, is responsible for the costs of doing the SEPA on that. Thank you very much for your attention to this matter. Thank you, Ms. Danver. 
I don't see any other hands up. Is there any anybody else that would like to give a comment of a general nature to the Port Commission? I see a Patrick with his hand up. I do too. Okay, Patrick, uh, would you like to give public comment this morning? I think you're muted perhaps, Patrick. All right, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Patrick Hanratty. I am uh, president of the uh, Salmon Creek Basin Neighborhood Association. Uh, we comprise uh, over 225 family residences uh, southeast of uh, the development, proposed development area there, south of, uh, of uh, Bush Middle School. And uh, obviously we have some, some very serious concerns about this development. We're, we're, uh, we're not opposed to development in general, uh, but but this particular development doesn't seem to align well with uh, with the port's strategic goals of uh, environmental sustainability. So some of the uh, concerns that we have have already been stated, but I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of read some things that we have put together that the neighbors are concerned about. Uh, you know, obviously there's going to be huge uh, increases in traffic. What will the new truck traffic do to our public health and safety, quality of life, and our property values? As residents, those are big concerns to us. How do we protect the, the middle school kids from higher levels of pollution? If we restrict truck traffic to the north end of Kimmy, how is that ever going to be enforced? How, and then how can the neighbors access Tumwater towards the north? I'm assuming that Center Street then will become a major thoroughfare and also have more truck traffic. Uh, we're gonna be logging, uh, that project will be logging a ton of uh, mature trees. It's, a, it's the only urban forest in this in the county, South County here that's, that's there, it's available. It's much better to protect and preserve habitat than to tear it out and try to replace it with some remedial uh, activity. Uh, the, the flood might mitigation uh, is going to have to be a big year issue because this is a high groundwater, groundwater area that's been documented in the past and what's caused major flooding problems out here. Uh, that habitat's also home to a ton of wildlife and, and habitat, and we'd like to see that preserved as well. We have economic concerns about how the warehouses are exempt from building occupancy and use taxes? How might the reductions in home values be offset from the income that the warehouses bring in? Thurston County's 2012 ecosystem service analysis shows that these 200 acres already provide $2 million per year in flood mitigation, air cleaning and cooling and other benefits. We'd like to see the developers provide an updated ecosystem service analysis that includes the carbon reduction benefit provided by the forest that's currently there. We feel that this land could provide better opportunities for our community than just clearing, paving, and warehouses that really don't provide that many jobs per acre. Yeah, Mr. Hanready, thank you. Could you uh, perhaps wrap it up? You're over three minutes. Yes, Thanks. I'm sorry. Uh, that's, that'll do it. Thank you very much for, for your time. Well, thank you for your comments. Thank you. Okay, uh, is there anybody else that'd like to give public comment at this time? Uh, we've had about 30 minutes of public comment. Uh, we do have another public comment period uh, immediately following the two advisories. So I'd like to move on if we could, but you know, if anybody has a burning need of uh, one last call for public comment. Don't see any new hands at this point. Well, thank you everyone for your comments. And so at this time, uh, we turn to uh, commission response to public comment. And, uh, you know, I want to mention to my commissioners that every public comment we heard today was about the uh, subject matter of today's meeting. And of course, we will be talking about that and having additional time to comment, Commissioner. So with that, uh, Commissioner McGregor or Commissioner Zita, would you like to respond to public comment? Well, 
Commissioner McGregor, you're muted, I think, so. I will uh, reserve comment until after the uh, presentations have been made and uh, we'll take uh, that time at that point. So thank you. Thanks, Commissioner McGregor, I appreciate that. Uh, Commissioner Zita, uh, do you have any public response to public comment? Yes, Mr. Olson recommended that the development agreement include a requirements for photovoltaic that would be consistent with this commission's agreement to support solar photovoltaic on port property. We have done a little bit. We would have an opportunity to do more here. Um, we probably would not be eligible for the same kind of, um, of rebates that private citizens are eligible for, and it would almost certainly not replace the climate benefits currently provided by the trees. As Mr. Um, Hanratty noted, the trees have been estimated to provide over $2 million per year as standing forest and ecosystem services benefits, and that doesn't even include carbon mitigation. So thank you for that, Mr. Olson. Dr. Wheatley, um, the development agreement should include the developer. Yes, we'll have additional questions about that later on. A lot of people have questions about costs. There are additional costs that are being laid on the port in this development agreement. We have no estimates at this time as to what those costs will be. Therefore, before the commission approves anything, we need an updated pro forma. Without an updated pro forma and a careful analysis of the costs, the additional costs, this commission will be derelict in its duty in approving anything new at this time. Uh, let's see. Ms. Reiner, yes, the children at Bush Middle School, we're hearing a lot of comments with concern about the children. As Dr. Barden noted, diesel exhaust is carcinogenic. It also causes leukemia in children. That was published by the California Air Resources Board over a decade ago. And removing trees would remove an important buffer which provides cleaner air. So we have some big concerns about public safety. Mr. Pelly is concerned about uh, ecological destruction, global and climate instability, and recommended that we turn this unspoiled green belt into a conservation region. Washington Environmental Council has an opportunity that the port should consider. I'm addressing my fellow commissioners. I ask for your attention, please, Commissioner Downing. Hello, hi, hi Commissioner Zita. Am I allowed I, to look I, at my packet while you're talking? Um, I can do two things at once, just anyway, please go ahead. I ask for the respect of your attention. I'm um, responding to Mr. Pelly and offering an opportunity to my fellow commission. Washington Environmental Council has a community forest project. There are resources available for us to preserve Tumwater's urban forest as a community for us in line with Mr. Pelly's suggestion. Um, Dr. Barden has given us details about the health risks of diesel exhaust and asked about estimates of the truck traffic. Since we do not have a specific proposal before us, there has yet to be a traffic study, but I can give you some estimates. There was a project proposed that was about one fifth the size of this one about a decade ago that would have generated over 12,000 trucks per day. This project, if it scales up linearly, would then generate over 60,000 trucks per day. That would be several trucks per minute, night and day. Ms. Wolfsburg is concerned about the process, among other things, very short notice to the public on this meeting, very little time for the public and the commission to review the documents, concerns about the costs of the street changes, the trail, 
uh, HCP mitigation, we do not know those costs. They are likely to run into the millions. They're guaranteed to run into the millions. Without an estimate of those costs, this commission will be derelict in its duty to approve any agreement at this time. Ms. Danver is concerned about um, downstream of the high groundwater hazard area on which this proposal is may be developed. The Salmon Creek Basin is a designated high groundwater hazard area and water should be flowing south to the Salmon Creek Basin and other tributaries. There is potential for significant ecological damage outside this area and to uh, salmon in those streams. Mr. Hanratty, the president of the nearby neighborhood, represents over 500 individuals, and they are concerned about public health and safety, traffic, property values, um, the environment, the extreme flooding. This is the worst flooding area in Thurston County. The trees currently mitigate that flooding cutting the trees and replacing with fringes of baby trees will reduce flood mitigation. Um, and for Mr. Hanratty asks us to consider better opportunities for the community, the environment, and better financial opportunities. Thank you all for your comments. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, McGregor and Commissioner Zeta. Um, I'm going to fall in the middle. Commissioner McGregor's comments were zero and Commissioner Zeta's comments were a little over four minutes. So I'll try to keep mine to uh, two minutes. So uh, going down the list, uh, Mr. Olson, what a novel idea. What a great idea putting solar panels on the roofs of some of these warehouses. So that really has got my attention. I see that it's got Commissioner Zita's attention. So that's a good subject matter. And I want to just start by saying that uh, this is the first public touch of this interlocal agreement uh, proposal. Um, there's going to be at least one more touch by the port, at least two touches by the city of Tumwater. So I appreciate everybody's public input. Um, it's very valuable to us. And I know you've got some concerns and I want to recognize those concerns. And this is just another step in the process. Um, behind the scenes, uh, Tumwater staff and port staff have been working on this ILA since the commission uh, asked staff to move forward from this um, about 11 months ago. So a lot of work has been done to get to this point, but now we're ready to roll out the first look at a potential ILA, which I'm probably gonna say with almost 100% certainty that there'll be some adjustments to it. So nothing's getting signed today and nothing is, uh, of course, finalized, but we are having a, an, another public discussion about the uh, overall project. So anyway, I like Mr. Olson's comments. Uh, I appreciate Dr. Wheatley's comments about the legal issues and our, we our legal uh, staff. Uh, Valicia is on the call and so she's hearing that and, and I'm sure she'll uh, take that in consideration. Um, I'd like to say to Ms. Reiner that, uh, you know, really one thing that I'm hanging my hat on is that we're closing Kimmy Street and that we won't have truck traffic going past the middle school. Um, I'd like to say to ask Mr. Pelly what his definition of a virgin forest is, because this particular property uh, was original prairie land and then it got planted by uh, uh, lumber companies to create additional harvests. And so what, what you're looking at right now is uh, uh, second growth or third growth forest. And it never was uh, originally uh, forest. So, but I'm not sure what your definition of a virgin forest is. Perhaps yours is different than mine. And then uh, So yeah, and then Carla Wolfsburg, I think, or also as Dr. Wheatley mentioned the, uh, you know, and Commissioner Zita didn't want me looking at my printout here of the 
of the actual agreement, but I, we're in a meeting, I've got my papers in front of me and I'm talking to you at the same time. And it does say here in um, paragraph 7.1 that the property owner shall bear the cost of relocation and redevelopment of Kimmy Street. So I uh, appreciate you pointing out that particular nuance, which we are the property owner. So, you know, I think that's valid to, to uh, mention that in the presentation, perhaps uh, Mr. Rowe, Alan Rowe, our port staff is gonna be presenting to us about some of the aspects of this agreement. And my understanding is that we're closing Kimmick Street. So whether or not, so I'd just like that to be uh, re-verified. So anyway, a lot of good comments. Um, that's all I have to say at this point, I have more to say later, thank you. So with that, we're gonna move on to our next agenda item which we have two uh, agenda items for today's meeting. Both of them are advisory. And the first one is the new market development agreement, interlocal agreement with the city of Tumwater draft terms. And our own Alan Rowe is presenting. Welcome, Alan. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Uh, I'm Alan Rowe, the uh, Business Development and Real Estate Director uh, for the Port of Olympia, and uh, here today to talk about uh, the subject we've been discussing, which is a uh, potential development agreement and interlocal agreement uh, with the City of Tumwater. Um, also joining us today is uh, Felicia. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a, a very high-level um, discussion here on, on the general terms, how we've got here. Um, generally what they mean in, in context of what we're looking at. Uh, Valicia is going to be able to provide you a much uh, detailed level in terms of what the actual agreement covers and, and the terms outlined in the agreement. So I'll go ahead and run through uh, mine, answer any questions, and then uh, Valicia has a presentation prepared for you also. Uh, go ahead, next slide, please. Um, background, as you know uh, clearly, but uh, for the sake of the public on the uh, call today is uh, essentially how we got here was last July, the uh, commission executed agreement with uh, Panatoni Development for a option to lease. And that's a, uh, an option to be able to lease in the future an area that was outlined um, up to 200 acres. Um, it wasn't a requirement to lease all of those acreage or develop all of those acreage, but it did give them uh, the right to potentially lease up to that area. Uh, we heard a lot of comments, uh, just as we are uh, today, as far as concerns about this development. Uh, in addition to the port hearing these concerns, the city of Tumwater uh, heard these concerns, along with had some concerns of their own. Um, in September of last year, uh, the commission directed uh, port staff to go ahead and, and try to be proactive and address these concerns, uh, potentially through what we're looking at today, a development agreement, uh, some way to solidify our approach to how we're going to address those along with also um, providing certainty for our developer and then also the port in terms of our relationship with this developer that we've chosen uh, for the option. Uh, since then, I do believe we've had a great conversation with staff along with uh, Tumwater City Council has been able to discuss this openly also a couple times, not necessarily this exact agreement, uh, but in general, some conversation that we've then heard and incorporated uh, into our agreement. Uh, next slide. Uh, just a comment on the past on the last slide, Mr. Rowe. Yes. Great effort between the city and port staff. It should be noted that at our August 5th meeting, the city of Tomwater expressed serious reservations about the proposed 20 year vestment. So background again, the uh, area that Panatoni has uh, under option under their option to ground lease is approximately this 200 acre area uh, within our new market uh, campus. Uh, what you can see in the center there is uh, actually the, the Tumwater School District's uh, bus barn uh, that was already leased area. And then uh, for reference, the school that's being discussed, uh, Bush Middle School, is in the lower left corner of the option area. You can see their track and then the, uh, the building for the schools right there as, as well. Uh, next slide. 
Um, the option itself uh, does outline that um, everything has to be done uh, per existing stormwater code. And that uh, the zoning on that is uh, the airport related industrial zoning. Um, the agreement with Panatoni is a 10 year term. Uh, just recently in our July 12th uh, meeting last month, the port did approve a lease template and that was a um, term uh, in the option agreement. Essentially, before moving forward on an actual lease, we would agree to the lease template and what those terms look like. Uh, Pantone does have a requirement to lease a minimum of 10 acres at a time. Uh, they can't come in with a proposal smaller than that and uh, have that right to option. Then. The uh, option agreement does uh, allow for commercial uh, business park or light industrial uh, development that's also consistent with uh, Tom Waters Code. And then uh, there's a requirement on the port uh, with our partners uh, with the city of Tumwater that we complete our work uh, on the HCP uh, within 10 years. However, that was also last month uh, revised just because of how that timeline has been uh, to extend that term. And next slide. Uh, some, some big things that we heard uh, basically since uh, July of, of last year, along with also we heard some of that uh, today as well. A uh, big one was was the truck traffic. Is is what what is this development going to do in terms of uh, the amount of trucks uh, on the road in this area? And uh, primarily the concern was these trucks going by um, uh, the school and and the kids there, along with going further south down through the residential uh, neighborhoods. But we also heard as far as the impact on uh, tree areas in this area and what the removal of trees. Uh, would be on, on the impact on the environment. Um, not necessarily uh, a concern, but uh, some conversation that did come from this was, you know, what sort of uh, public benefit could this provide in addition to the economic uh, development opportunity that's providing to the area? Uh, multi-use trails was one of those. Uh, be able to develop in a multi-use trail uh, in conjunction with its development not just for the users uh, that will be employed here, but also for the general community. Uh, in addition, a, a request for land for the city of Tumwater to construct a community center, that was requested of the port also. And then um, one of the things as well that, that came up and was worth noting was uh, the potential of unsuitable materials uh, that was in this area. And I, I wanna say we, we haven't identified those, but uh, we can't say any unsuitable materials uh, that are potentially identified in the development uh, would be addressed and removed. Uh, next slide. Mr. Rowe, I want to thank you for, can we go back please? Mr. Rowe, I want to thank you for, address, for addressing some of the concerns about environment and com community impacts. There is another class of concerns that have been raised consistently, and we're hearing a lot of those concerns again today, and those are financial concerns. So that needs to be on our radar, financial concerns. Okay, great. Yeah, I've got some numbers I'll be able to address those with here. Uh, next slide. Uh, so what we went ahead and as far as outlining uh, what sort of terms would be included uh, in a development agreement, uh, essentially, we packaged up these foundational elements, uh, which did include uh, a vesting period of 20 years. Um, this, this agreement is with the port and uh, the city of Tumwater, primarily because we didn't want to show that benefit uh, to this sole developer and have the port go through this effort and then have an agreement just be between the developer and the city of Tumwater. Um, you know, if, if the developer um, decides to exit their option agreement, uh, we did want to have an agreement that benefited the port for us to either uh, utilize ourselves or utilize with another developer. So uh, this vesting term is for 20 years. Uh, this is, agreement is with uh, the port and the city along with um, a consent uh, by the developer. Again, uh, everything is consistent with Tumwater code. Uh, typically you do see in development agreements when um, kind of this exchange for benefits is provided, um, there's generally possibly an ask as far as uh, variances go to the existing code. 
In this case, we, we have not asked for anything like that. So um, this moving forward, nothing in this development agreement allows us to do um, anything that we currently aren't allowed to do by code today. A big thing to address the truck traffic is the commitment to uh, essentially provide internal circulation. So uh, essentially, it, it would be very difficult for truck traffic to go to the south here. And, and by doing that, essentially, we're, we're providing a, an entrance and an exit to this proposed uh, development area. And, and that just goes to Center Street. Um, I, I'm not saying it isn't possible for, for a truck to then exit to the south. Um, however, at that point, it, it just does not make sense. And the port does commit to providing anything we can do to support any sort of restrictions on truck traffic going to, to the south. And we would partner up uh, with the city of Tumwater on that, uh, obviously with the commission's support. Um, you know, unfortunately, we can't change the location of the school and the fact that it's located within a thousand feet of the interstate, um, along with you know, the, the buses, the diesel buses that they utilize. Um, but we are able to address then this truck traffic for potential um, development here. Um, hey, I think Commissioner, uh, Alan, I'd just like to interject that in the bottom right hand of your screen, your picture there is the International Wood Products Facility. It's about a 10 to 20 acre parcel. parcel. And I talked to their dispatcher and 100% of their truck traffic goes north on Center Street and gets on the interstate at Tumwater Boulevard. And I'd just like to throw in that factoid. Thank you. Thank you. I, I do want to address some uh, truck traffic uh, numbers concerns. Uh, we don't have a project proposal, so it is difficult to come up with some exact numbers. Um, I can tell you some numbers we've heard, though, aren't accurate. Um, and, and I just want to frame it in perspective. Uh, Washington State DOT traffic geo portal uh, publishes their traffic counts on Interstate 5. Um, the, the interstate, again, that's uh, within a thousand feet of the school. Um, currently, total daily traffic on the interstate right now is at 66,000 vehicles. Uh, approximately 11,000 of those vehicles are trucks. Um, so I, I don't believe it's um, you know, reasonable for us to expect truck traffic um, at 60,000 trucks per day through this development, not at all. Um, my, my background worked with large scale um, development projects and you know you, you would you would never see numbers that high um, you know, possibly just in a few hundred uh, on a high side uh, per truck uh, per day so I can uh, I can assure you truck traffic counts would not be that high along with uh, again that everything would exit to the north um, I, I will uh, again part of this here addresses uh, the removal of Kimmy Street as you can see on this um, conceptual layout, uh, Kimmy Street no longer goes past uh, Bush Middle School. Uh, I, I do want to say that, yes, uh, residents from the south that would normally utilize Kimmy Street to go all the way north uh, would have to just uh, jot over to Center Street and utilize Center Street to, to go north. Um, the, uh, the agreement does uh, say that the port uh, is responsible for the costs of the relocation of Kimmy Street. Uh, essentially, what, what that means is the city of Tumwater is not responsible for the cost of relocating uh, Kimmy Street. Uh, that's the primary purpose and intent of that. Um, at, at, at no way would it be reasonable uh, with an expectation for the port to actually bear that cost. This would be a cost put on our developer um, along with um, the cost of these, these trails as well. Uh, there has been no discussion or no expectation for the port to bear those costs related to road relocation or actual trail construction. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so Tumwater does have uh, existing tree ordinance code. Essentially uh, removal of trees require a one-to-one -one mitigation. So any tree removed out here does have to be mitigated and, and replaced. Uh, you know, there's, there's great intent just to uh, retain trees uh, wherever possible, just uh, for the good that they provide along with, uh, you know, there is a, a development cost aspect of that too. So uh, we were able to identify a large area around the school and um, talking about win-wins here, uh, this is a win for everyone. It, it provides a, a large tree retention buffer 
uh, Round Bush Middle School to uh, screen this development uh, from the school, along with, you know, this is a large uh, tree area as part of the development and being able to keep that is great, along with um, planting trees wherever possible within islands, um, on the impervious surfaces, along the roadways, uh, to retain trees, but also, as you'll see in some illustrations later on here, um, you know, screening opportunities on uh, Center Street as well. Uh, as I mentioned, there is a multi-use trail uh, added in here in addition to the sidewalk network that will go around the development. Uh, the proposed multi-use trail uh, is on the west side of the development between the development and uh, Interstate 5. And this was essential to provide uh, more of a natural feel to it uh, versus fronting it along uh, Center Street, which is uh, going to be more typical of your, your hard surfaces and your, and your sidewalks. We don't want to lose sight that we've uh, been a big supporter of seeing the Secretary of State uh, development happen. Uh, this is also outlined um, in this conceptual sketch while separate from Hannah Tony. Uh, we do want to do everything uh, while considering our global development and uh, Office of the Secretary of State uh, Library and Archives building is part of that. And as you can see right now, that's proposed at the corner of Center Street and Water Boulevard. Uh, community center property uh, is provided as, as part of this. Um, this was something, you know, again, we had not originally planned, but we're able to incorporate into this conceptual sketch along with bid in. And I've got a special slide uh, where I'll talk more in detail on that. Um, since Panatoni exercised their auction agreement, uh, International Wood Products it did come to the board and said that they wanted to double their existing footprint that they have with us at the uh, southeast corner, bottom right corner of this development. This area is under um, auction uh, with Panatoni, so the port doesn't necessarily have the immediate right uh, to lease area to IWP, but um, you know Panatoni has shown they've been a very solid partner with the port and has engaged conversations with IWP on essentially providing a pass-through lease um, to IWP uh, so we can support this existing business and not essentially take up an area for building development. <clears throat> and then lastly, you know, I just want to reiterate, um, you know, unsuitable materials just simply have to be removed. Uh, you know, development can occur uh, on top of anything that is deemed unsuitable uh, when geotechnical investigations have been done and then identified such materials. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. I have some questions. Huh? Um, so you said that it would be difficult but not impossible for trucks to go south. Can you be more specific? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, we've identified and created this environment where the natural exit path uh, would be for trucks to uh, exit this location onto Center Street and then go up to Tumwater Boulevard where the closest interchange is. Um, currently, uh, you know, a, a truck could turn right out of this development, head south on Center Street, um, go down to 83rd and then down to Kimmy and uh, route its way through that. <clears throat> um, not very probable, but it, but it is possible. And, and in that case, I think, you know, if we, if we put a, um, you know, support of, you know, city of Tumwater uh, imposing a truck restriction, on those on those roads, mm -hmm. I, I believe that, that would see the support of, of this commission and, and port staff for sure. But we have done everything would, possible. So thank you, thank you, Mr. And, Rowe, for that well, explanation. Uh, I just have one more comment on this, but uh, we have done everything possible as far as eliminating, you know, the ease of, of a truck wanting to naturally flow to the south, as the Kimmy Road did, you know, in in existing configuration. Okay. That helps, um, that, that specificity helps us understand what the port's plan is here. As we've heard about Kimmy Street being removed or realigned or blocked off or not blocked off. So the way the trucks could still go south on Kimmy would be by going to center, then 83rd and then south on Kimmy. Um, and you say that's not likely, but in fact, there's a big pilot truck stop right down there and trucks like to go to that pilot truck stop and they will go. Um, one way or another, because they'll need to refuel either going south on Kimmy or going south on Armstrong Road to 93rd Avenue or um, 
going up on the highway north to Tumwater and then taking the next exit south on 93rd Avenue, which would probably be the least attractive option because then they have to make one, two, three, four left turns, which are very difficult for trucks in this area. So um, one thing that should be added to this development agreement would be um, a formal restriction of trucks on Kimmy Street and on Armstrong Road, which is a residential road. There are homes on both sides of Armstrong and the east end of 88th Avenue, which is the route that trucks currently take. For example, the Cardinal Glass trucks go down Armstrong Road and then the east end of 88th Avenue in order to access 93rd to get to the pilot truck stop. So um, since it is not impossible for trucks to go through the residential neighborhood, it makes sense to put in the development agreement or in a little, I guess the development agreement, some specific restrictions that would be useful. Um, let's see. International wood products. Um, can you point out to us on the map where that is? Yeah, in the uh, in the lower right of the map, it says uh, future IWP yard expansion. And that's is it possible for a for a, a mouse or something to show the public where that is? That's great. And then you can see Bush Middle School's ball field or track field just to the left of that. If you would point that out, there it is. Great. So currently, International Wood Pro Pro Products site is half that size or less. There's a big forest between the current site and the school site. So the whole west side of that International Wood Project site is now forested. Um, it was pointed out in the August 5th meeting that this development proposal is not in compliance with our own New Market Industrial Campus Master Plan. One of the provisions for District 4 of our New Market Industrial Campus Master Plan is that buffers be provided between any industrial developments or expansions and the school and the neighborhood. There's a tiny fringe of trees on this map between the school and international wood products and a tiny fringe of trees between international wood products and 83rd Avenue, where there are about a hundred families on 83rd Avenue. There's a big housing development and many single family homes. So um, that's a severe violation of our own master plan by eliminating any significant tree buffer um, that site should be moved north and east. Um, the tree buffer needs to be bigger between the school and International Wood Products, and the tree buffer needs to be bigger on 83rd Avenue. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, you might say a point of order here, uh, which is, you know, I'm in charge of, of, of running the meeting in a, a order, uh, orderly fashion. So, Commissioner Zita, a lot of your topics here are, <clears throat> are, are proposed revisions to the ILA, but the poor commission, we're not to the point in the meeting where the poor commissioners are discussing the pros and cons of this agreement. And I'd ask you to just let Alan get through his presentation. And then if, if you have to go back to a certain slide to make a point, then great. But, you know, uh, please continue, Alan. Yeah, and I will do, you know, you can see the uh, the school is quite a great distance away um, from this area. And uh, this is not a building development. This is a yard storage for their products. It, it may include some covered storage areas, um, but uh, you know, mostly they, they're a building material uh, distributor. And, and With many semi-trucks in and out of that yard day and night, and there are many semi-trucks that are currently parked on Center Street because there's no room to park in International Wood Products. I, yeah, understand, more, I understand that they need more room. And so if they get the room that is drawn on this map, those dozens of extra semi-trucks will be parked closer to the school. 
That's not a good solution. Uh, no, this does not uh, provide access to aid and cure um, here. This is well, expansion point of, area. Point of order, if I could. Uh, Commissioner Downing, you've asked that we hold our comments until we're done, and I think that's appropriate. I think staff needs to give the presentation, and uh, we need to be respectful of staff, let them give the presentation, and then we ask our questions at the end. Uh, we have this, uh, I think, slotted from 10, 10 to 11.30. I do have another appointment at uh, 11.45 that I'll need to leave for. So I would appreciate it if we could just get through the presentations and then make uh, comments as we see fit. Thank you. Thank you, um, Commissioner McGregor. Your point of order is noted and uh, I will uh, run the meeting accordingly. Thank you. I have a question for uh, the chair. Um, we were originally scheduled to be approving this development agreement next Monday. Is that still the plan? Commissioner uh, Zidi, your question's also out of order. Uh, the, the subject of today's meeting is this ILA and advisory. And when and if this comes back to the commission, uh, check your packet, check your website, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, please continue, that's, Alan. That's an, that's an inadequate response. If the commission is to be asked to approve this on Monday, we need an adequate discussion and we need our questions answered. And we need- Well, commission, uh, Commissioner Zita, you're a poor commissioner. If you read your emails, you look at the schedule of events. I'm not gonna do your homework for you. Please continue, so we, Alan. Well, then I will inform the public that we were informed that we will be asked to approve this next Monday. And this is very premature. We need our questions answered. We need additional information and we need further discussion before we approve this. Thank you, please continue, Alan. Next slide. Uh, so specific to the community center um, site is uh, this was request uh, put forward um, by the city of Tumwater to be able to facilitate the development uh, of a potential community center in the, in the future. Um, you know, I do wanna point out that we were able to provide this site, uh, but some feedback from the city of Tumwater was this was not their ideal site. Uh, their preference would be closer to Tumwater Boulevard uh, but we did have some challenges on being able to provide a site um, up there. Um, specifically, uh, we needed a site that was within the current option area. And if you remember from the uh, earlier uh, illustration I showed you of what the outlined option area was, um, mm -hmm. we didn't have an area um, essentially up next to Tumwater mm -hmm. Boulevard, uh, let alone across from Tumwater Boulevard. Um, ultimately, this is a, uh, an area that will be provided um, at a no-cost lease uh, from Panatoni to the city of Tumwater. And, uh, you know, candidly, the structure for this is uh, the, the port needs to be very careful on two issues, is our, our gifting requirements, along with also our, our requirements with the FAA and achieving fair market value on property. Um, to be able to structure this and, and not violate any of those, those terms, um, we essentially triggered this to uh, for 10 acres of, of land, 9.78 acres here shown, um, Panatoni would have to lease uh, a minimum of 100 acres, uh, ultimately for the, for the whole package. Uh, the reason for that is your economies of scale on uh, what, your, what your value, your lease price is on 100 acres versus let's just say 10 acres. So cumulatively, um, once, once we get up to a, around 100 acres, um, this property then can be provided within the lease at our structured rates um, within the option agreement that really reflect 10, you know, minimum of 10 acre size uh, lease rates. Um, an additional challenge, in addition to being outside of the option area, um, the Linderson site, uh, the, the Tumwater Boulevard and Linderson uh, Avenue there, um, that was Tumwater's preference, has approximately about a 50% higher value um, on the property than what uh, the, uh, the more industrial property does here uh, further to the south. Um, you know, we, we hear Tumwater's preference um, for a few reasons on why they would prefer a site up there, um, but we do feel we could provide this one along with then understanding that they want to, you know, have this be an attractive space for their community center is really work on providing that gateway off of Tumwater Boulevard down to this community center property one block mm -hmm. off of it. That's just really enhancing uh, the gateway feel to it, 
along with then uh, taking a focused approach to the parcel to the north of that and kind of um, not in a legal sense, but you know, master plan um, these two parcels kind of together, just understanding that we've got the, the potential community center down there. Uh, next slide. The cost to the port of the lost um, income for this uh, 10 acres or 20 acres or whatever it turns out to be needs to be included on the updated pro forma, which will also include all the other additional expenses which have popped up recently. Yeah, there is, there is no loss of cost um, to the port on this. Um, the port is essentially charging uh, full price for the option agreement of what it would, let's say for a 10 acre lease on a total of 100 acres uh, with the provision <laughs> of, of, of this area. Um, if that wasn't factored in, uh, the cost represents approximately $230,000 uh, per year mm -hmm. for uh, what 10 acres is valued at. Staff had presented to us yeah, that- Commissioner Zita, a point of order. Uh, the chair has requested that you hold your discussion of this presentation until the end of the presentation. Please continue, Alan. Thank you. Some conceptual renderings that I've provided to, to show these buffer areas, which uh, keep in mind, we're talking you know, on these maps that we're seeing, it's probably 400 to 600 acres visible um, on some of these previous maps that you've seen. So you have to understand scale. Uh, what could look like a, a small buffer area is quite in fact large. Um, and just for example, you know, one of the narrowest buffer areas that you see is what's going up and down Center Street. Um, however, here from this conceptual rendering and the buffer uh, outlined and, and illustrated here, you can see uh, what those look like. And, and that's much more enhanced than your typical just street trees uh, going down the road. So you can see developments on the far right and left, and then a good buffer area of trees to provide that screening uh, from the development in the road. Next slide. I went ahead and this is just a, a more enhanced uh, rendering here. Uh, this would be essentially after you turn on Tumwater Bowl, off of Tumwater Boulevard onto mm -hmm. Center Street, uh, you would have uh, the development that uh, Panda Tony proposes uh, on your right-hand side. And then on your left-hand side is just a, a stab at what a community center could potentially look at, look like. And, uh, that's illustrated here along with those buffer areas. Uh, go ahead, next slide. Uh, Panda Tony did have a firm uh, estimate annual impacts and along with uh, the port itself, I took a look at um, some property tax impacts that you'll see here uh, later on. But uh, again, we don't have a specific project in mind. Uh, so the, the consultants that did take a look at this did provide a range just because this is kind of uh, assuming full build out of potentially buildings with various uses. Um, and uh, they get anywhere from the 1,700 to 2,600 direct jobs. Um, you know, $124 million in new wages, and then ultimately $354 million uh, total economic uh, production uh, from this development. Next slide. We need an independent economic cost benefit analysis to go with the updated pro forma before the commission makes any decision on this matter. This is not uh, an independent analysis. It was hired. Point of order, Commissioner Zida. Mm -hmm. I've asked you several times. Please hold your comments until the end of the presentation. Thank you. I know you're chomping at the bit. Please continue, Alan. I'm and dismayed slide, that our that our commission chair. Point of order, Commissioner uh, Zida. Uh, the chair is instructing you to hold your comments until the end of the presentation. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is uh, just in terms of the actual construction. So uh, these are kind of more one-time um, benefits that uh, the state and, and local authorities would also see from the sales tax generated uh, from the, the construction of the buildings. And um, as far as any uh, exemptions that from a uh, B&O tax standpoint, there are some uh, incentives that the, the state uh, issues. Uh, the port has nothing to do with those, um, but I do believe those are more limited to uh, manufacturing facilities and exemption on B&O tax uh, related to equipment in there. Um, overall, pretty pretty minor, but again, uh, that's a statewide incentive uh, that the port has nothing to do with and um, any 
anyone would achieve that anywhere in the state that they chose to develop. Uh, next slide. And then here's your annual uh, property tax uh, estimated uh, benefits. And, and this is just simply on the improvements, uh, the port, because we retain the land and lease that. Uh, we pay what's called a leasehold tax. Uh, we pass this on to the developer at 12.84% uh, uh, of what their, their lease rate is. Uh, that goes out and gets divvied up uh, against the different uh, jurisdictions, municipalities. However, uh, Thurston County uh, does assess sale or uh, property tax on improvements. So anything improved above the ground, uh, these are the benefits that you would see from the conceptual layout that I provided earlier. Uh, next slide. Uh, one of the things, and you know, again, we we heard concerns about um, jobs, jobs per acre. Um, you know, this just simply being uh, warehouse distribution. Uh, like I said last year. Uh, Anatoni, uh, you know, if not solely focused on um, warehouse distribution, uh, they will entertain uh, what the market is asking for out there. And if that's going to be office buildings, if that's going to be manufacturing facilities or warehouse distribution. Um, there is a project right now uh, that uh, Anatoni would uh, love to be able to proceed with, and that is actually a manufacturing facility. So uh, the first proposed project uh, would be a, a manufacturing facility and um, employ some good jobs in Tumwater. And the proposed site, which uh, this is kind of a zoomed in view around uh, international wood products. Um, this, uh, this so far on, on current surveys uh, has not found uh, any gopher impacts. So this one, um, I believe, then would not be held up um, by any of the HCP requirements and could go through uh, standard permitting process for the city of Tomar. Uh, next slide. Uh, these are just kind of the, the steps here is, um, you know, that we've taken uh, in addition to the steps that we took with the uh, auction agreement uh, over the past year. But um, you do recall, we, we did have an advisory uh, session on this on uh, July 12th. So this is not the first time uh, this commission is, is hearing this or seeing this presentation. Um, it, this is the first time the commission has seen the actual uh, legal document to a proposed development agreement. However, all of the terms in the development agreement are consistent with uh, what we provided in advisory. Uh, Tomwater City Council had a discussion on this uh, back on July 13th. Uh, we did hear some feedback uh, from that as far as community center property and uh, not necessarily wanting it fully restricted to a community center and, and termed that way. So we were able to expand that essentially um, on a facility publicly owned for the public benefit um, by the city of, of Tumwater. So I was able to expand that. Here, here are the comments uh, that we heard that night and get those changes incorporated. Uh, there was a, an open house jointly held by the city of Tumwater and uh, the port was uh, there as well back on August 5th. Uh, and then uh, we're having this advisory today. It has been uh, proposed for action, and, and I'll let Felicia really get into this uh, in her presentation, but uh, proposed for action for essentially to formally uh, out in the open propose that. That's not, that's not saying that this won't come back potentially to the commission uh, with some changes based off of Tumwater having a, a more formal review of this document. It's just uh, kind of a, a timing thing and, and what, um, Again, not to steal Felicia's thunder here, but um, just what, what we're able to do and, and how we process and present this. Um, and then looking forward uh, after um, some recesses that the city of Tumwater has to potentially uh, have them look back at this uh, starting around September. Uh, next slide. Uh, I, I will take uh, questions and, and let uh, the chair uh, lead those, but um, I, think, I think lastly, uh, so notes I, I do have as far as, um, you know, revenues and costs to the port. Um, I, I did not hear anything accurate uh, today that relates to cost to the port. Um, you know, as I did highlight the, the street changes, uh, the trails are, are not going to be borne by the port. Uh, along with the, you know, we've had the conversation many times as far as the uh, gopher mitigation um, impacts. And uh, that's essentially what's, what's needed to um, lease this property at fair market value. So uh, 
at, at the end of the day, this is not something the board is gifting to any developer. Uh, it's simply a, a need based off of the requirements put on us uh, because of this habitat. And um, it has since been estimated to be much uh, lower of a cost than what uh, you know we essentially, lack of a better term, budgeted for. Um, you know, we originally were looking at up to $100,000 uh, per acre uh, on potential mitigation costs just to you know, frame that in there. And latest conversations have uh, been you know, approximately around $60,000. So uh, in terms of a, a pro forma, uh, based off of the pro forma that I provided the commission previously, uh, those numbers will actually look even better uh, when these final HCP figures are published. That's it. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for that presentation. <clears throat> a couple of uh, housekeeping items. Uh, I didn't realize Commissioner McGargar needs to leave at 11:45. Um, I myself budgeted until noontime. So, given the fact that you know this is an extremely important topic for the Port Commission and the public. I'd like to fashion the meeting to uh, wind up at 11:45, and that means uh, uh, round robin with the port commissioners plus public comment. And at that point, I might entertain a motion to table uh, Valicia's presentation. I'm sorry, Valicia, but we're just short on time. Um, so, with that, I'm going to ask the commissioners round robin five minutes each for both clarification and discussion because that's all the time allows. Commissioner McGregor, please. Uh, might, might it be an option that we recess this uh, meeting until uh, later this afternoon? Uh, I think we'll be in OPMA compliance by doing it that way, but set a time for maybe three o'clock in the afternoon to recess. This is an important matter. I think it's going to require a lot of uh, a discussion amongst the commissioners as well as uh, the public comment that's sure to follow. Uh, and so I would suggest that perhaps we take a look at that if we, uh, that's an option so that we can get through this uh, today, but, uh, uh, but hold, uh, hold the uh, latter half of this until after, uh, till three o'clock. So just what I'm suggesting is recessing now with the reconvening at three, three o'clock today, but I'd have to ask Felicia to verify, I believe it's within OPMA uh, rules, if that's something the commissioners would like to entertain. Is it to me? Uh, a comment from uh, Commissioner Zita before we, uh, wait, wait a second. Commissioner McGregor. Thank you for uh, unmuting please. me. Thank you for unmuting me, Commissioner well, Downing. Let wait, Commissioner yeah, Downing. Thank you, Commissioner Zita. Thank you I, I for think, recognizing me. And I'm not recognizing you. Just Downing. please, just one second. Please no, respect you recognize me. I have the floor. I have no, the floor. No, she did not. Oh, you don't have not. the floor. No, you don't you have recognize the floor. Me. Commissioner I have McGregor, the floor. I, would you please make a formal motion? Sure. I would move that we recess this meeting uh, uh, until and reconvene it at 3 p.m. this afternoon so that we continue to have the presentations as well as to answer the various questions that have come up as a result of the presentations. So it's been moved. Motion. It's been moved to recess the meeting and reconvene at 3 p.m. Is there a second? No, amendment to the motion. For this purposes of discussion, is there a second? This afternoon is impossible and it is very short public notice. This process is irregular enough as it is. I amend the motion to continue this meeting next Monday at 5.30. That will give staff adequate time to prepare answers to the many questions which have been raised today. Thank you, Commissioner Zeta. Is there a second to the amendment to uh, recess this meeting and reconvene Monday night? Motion fails for lack of a second. I'm still looking for a second on Commissioner Meet McGregor's uh, request to recess and reconvene this meeting at 3 p.m. I'll second for purposes of discussion. So it's been moved and seconded. My discussion is that I agree with Commissioner Zita that the public won't be informed of a 3 p.m. meeting in case they want to chime in. Plus, I'm totally booked the rest of the day. So uh, all those in favor of uh, recessing this meeting and reconvening at 3 p.m., please say aye. Aye. 
Opposed, please say nay. 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 Thank you, Commissioner Zeta or McGregor for that effort. Um, I agree with Commissioner McGregor that we should recess and reconvene. Let's find another time. It should be Monday at the earliest to provide staff adequate time to provide answers to the many questions which have been brought up today. Do commissioners want to propose a time on Monday? Thank you, Commissioner Zita. Uh, it's not within the purview of the commissioners to schedule meetings. Just I'm asking for discussion. We're not scheduling, we're discussing. Well, Commissioner Zita, we have a regularly scheduled, we are discussing, and we do have a regularly scheduled commission meeting Monday night, at which time we could continue this discussion. I think that's a great idea, Commissioner Downing. Let us, I move that the agenda item for Monday night be changed to advisory instead of action so we can continue this discussion with additional information that has been requested today. The point of order, Commissioner Zita, your uh, motion is, is out of order because you're asking to set an agenda for an upcoming meeting. When staff sets the agenda, the commissioners approve the agenda at the beginning of the meeting. So according to Robert's rules and according to maintaining uh, some sense of order at the Port of Olympia, that's when you can change anything you want with the support of your fellow commissioners from advisory to action, to action other, to whatever you would like. And that happens at the beginning of every meeting, so. You accepted Commissioner McGregor's motion to schedule a meeting. I am trying to work with the commission here. Can we find a time that works? Commissioner McGregor has a good idea. We should continue this discussion. Let us discuss when we could do that. Yeah, point of order, Commissioner Zita, uh, reiterate what I just said, which is that for sure this is going to be a topic on Monday. I would like to advise you, the fellow commissioners and the public, that based on a lot of this public comment, plus the ongoing discussions between Port of Olympia and the city of Tumwater, that we may or may not be taking action on this item on Monday. So. You know, it's, it's in a state of flux. So far, this has been an excellent meeting, a lot of good comments. And so I'm not going to, we're not going to sit here on uh, whatever today is, Thursday afternoon, and, and decide what's happening Monday night or two Mondays from now. So in fact, um, you have already decided what's happening Monday night, and you have published an agenda for Monday night with this item as action. Commissioner McGregor, you have proposed that we continue this discussion at a later time. I support your suggestion. Um, and if you would like to make a suggestion about some other time or some other way to continue the discussion, I would like to hear your suggestion. Well, first of all, Commissioner Downing is correct. We have a published agenda and at the time of the approval of the agenda, we can move it on Monday from uh, action, action to action other to advisory or remove it altogether from the, from the agenda. So uh, I'm going to let that agenda stand as it is because the appropriate action would be taken at the meeting for that. Uh, as far as scheduling another time, uh, it would uh, it would really be up. I think I think it's up to us as commissioners to. Um, we've we've heard comment. Uh, I've got comments. Uh, I'm sure Commissioner Downey has further comments. I'm sure from listening to the interruptions that have gone on during the process of Alan's presentation that you have lots more comments. So. Uh, if you want to do something, then we need to schedule something before Monday. And I don't know if that's possible because once again, we go back to your, uh, your statement that the public doesn't have enough time. Well, M Monday, at, Monday evening is coming around uh, very shortly, 72 hours approximately from now, maybe even a little bit longer. So when do you think is going to be enough time? That's the question. And I think that uh, if it's available to do it 
reconvening this met this meeting lets everybody know that's on the meeting now that we're going to reconvene at a different time uh potentially this afternoon if that was possible but i don't know with schedules and everything everybody else i have a fairly open schedule today this afternoon but just not from 11 45 till about 2 30. well commissioner downing's already indicated that this afternoon is not possible and i think we all agree that that is too short notice for the public what I'm saying is the public that is interested is online now. They are listening. We have 24 attendees listening to this. We started out with about 13, so we've gained a few since then. So there's gonna be even more public that is aware of the next uh, reconvening this meeting at a future date. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's just like anything, just like any project, just like any deadline, things get a little bit more excited and perhaps a little bit more heated as deadlines approach. I would like to remind everyone and the audience that we've been uh, working on this for 11 months and we need to realize that we've been working on it for 11 months. And so the next few days are not gonna make a great deal of difference one way or the other. Um, we're working on getting this project done. Um, we burned up another 10 minutes talking about you know, when we could talk again but we did have a motion and a vote and the vote was we're not gonna reconvene later today. Uh, you know, so I'd like to use the remaining 15 minutes to ask my fellow commissioners <clears throat> what they think of Alan's presentation, five minutes each for uh, comments, questions, comments and questions. Who would like to go first? Go ahead, Commissioner Zita, you seem to have the most. First of all, I formally object to being muted during the meeting. I formally object to the president's, the commission chair's arbitrary uh, decision in the middle of the presentation that no questions would be accepted. Um, the public has raised many good questions. I have raised questions. This process has been rushed. The public was notified barely a day ago of this meeting. The document was released barely a day ago. You say we've been working on this for a year. Well, we do not have enough information. We only got it a day ago. There are a lot of questions that need to be addressed. There are a lot of questions about costs. We need a new pro forma. We need those questions about costs addressed. We've heard our staff say today that the port would be responsible for the cost of the trails, the street alignment, and, of, and the habitat conservation mitigation. We've also heard staff say we would not be responsible for those things. That is confusing. We need a new pro forma. We need to know what the costs to the port will be. Earlier presentations months ago indicated that the port would be losing lease income from the land that was granted to Tumwater. Today, they're saying we won't. That's confusing. We need a new pro forma. That is the least of the new information that is required for this commission to make an informed decision. It is premature for us to make any decision without the required information and without additional discussion. It sounds like this commission is leaning toward changing the action item on Monday to advisory next Monday. That would be a good decision. This matter needs more information and further discussion. I hope that we will have a majority vote to change this to advisory next year, next month, uh, next week, because we have a lot of questions about this and we need more information. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner Zita. Commissioner McGregor. Uh, I don't really have anything to talk about like uh, Commissioner Zita did, but I do uh, think that uh, solar is something worth looking at and perhaps the uh, developer of the property, uh, not being the port, but being the actual con contractor uh, would take a look at solar as an option for their, their buildings. Uh, that would be totally up to them. I think it's a good, uh, good use of solar power. Um, the rest of them have to do with de development agreements and uh, uh, Valicia, our legal counsel, uh, a trained attorney has been working on this for a while. I am full confidence that uh, what she is bringing forward 
uh, applies to the RCWs, uh, even those that people disagree and think we're not in agreement with uh, those RCWs, but I fully support what she has brought forward in that regard. And so uh, uh, let's see what else. Uh, Question for Alan, uh, is there a way in that agreement to make Center Street as the, uh, can it be designated as the, uh, and signed as the truck route, Center Street is the truck route out of town, uh, so that uh, as truckers are leaving the area, uh, they know that that's the designated truck route to keep them from turning right, coming out of one of those warehouses uh, as they enter onto Center Street. Is that something that can be administered by the Tumwater City uh, as a law? Is that their street or is that our street? It, That's my uh, question. Center, I believe, uh, Tumwater's, um, you know, I, I don't want to speak for the city, but I, I believe they could do that. Um, and, and I can tell you staff at this level would, would you know, fully support that. I mean, we've, we've committed to, you know, the, the community along with um, also having conversations with the school district that, you know, we fully intend to make sure that trucks don't go to the south. Yeah, right. So the, then the other one comment I want to make is that several people have mentioned the new market plan, uh, the 2015 new market plan. And to the best of my knowledge, we never approved that. It's still in draft form and was never approved by the commission. For some reason, this commission has not uh, bothered to move that forward from the, when it was presented. And so the fault lies on us if it has not been, but it is still in draft form. Thank you. That's all I have, Commissioner. Thank you. If, if I can make uh, two comments to some comments made, uh, correct on the, the master plan. Um, however, you know, I'm not going to discount all of the work that was put into that. Um, these efforts was did consider the work in there. And um, one thing I do urge the community to do is read the narrative, um, not just look at the, the graphic in the report, because if you just solely rely on the graphics in the plan, uh, they're a bit misleading without reading the narrative. Some of the graphics are just some possible situations versus the narrative allows for many expanded uses um, in this area. Um, solar, uh, there has been uh, interest from Panatonius for supporting uh, solar uh, to the extent possible. Uh, keep in mind, they may own some of these buildings. They may not own some of these buildings. Um, and it just depends their relationship. But also keep in mind, uh, they've got some pretty global users that are very, um, you know, environmentally minded and, and also have those shared interests as, as well, um, not just beyond buildings, but also their, um, you know, logistical fleets as well. Thank you. Well, thank you, commissioners. Uh, I do have a couple of comments. I'll try to keep them brief as the uh, time is short. But, uh, you know, just uh, I gave this some thought coming into the meeting and I, I read, thank you for all the written comments from the public and thank you for today's comments, uh, members of the public for, you know, letting us know how you feel and a lot of good ideas came out of, the, I think, that discussion. Um, in July of uh, 2020, last year, in July of last year, we granted Panatoni an option to lease and market. Uh, this property and the property does fit with all uh, current zoning uh, constraints as well as the uh, tree ordinance that the city of Tumwater has. Um, then in October of last year, the commission approved staff putting together an ILA in conjunction with the city of Tumwater. So that's what we're talking about today, this ILA. And it really is, it's not just the port, it's with the city of Tumwater. And why do we have an, uh, an ILA? It's a way, number one, it's a way for the city to gain things beyond existing zoning, such as the multi-use trail, such as 10 acres for community center, tree buffers, uh, jobs, and tax income. And, and on the flip side, it's a way for the developer to market the property for the next 20 years with this existing zoning standards remaining in place. And it gives them a chance to go out and find people to use this land. It's not gonna happen all at once, I think. What I've been told is they have one uh, person, you know, potentially signed up. So then um, it's been done many times before in this situation. For example, um, there's a developer that wants to put in 400 housing units along West Bay Drive in the city of Olympia. And they gave, uh, in their ILA, they gave $250,000, I believe, towards 
homeless mitigation in that process. So it's a little bit of a, you know, an exchange and negotiation between uh, two entities. Um, and the port, of course, once we approved the ILA, since we were tasked with uh, formulating the verbiage, then it goes to the city of Tumwater for their approval. And I mentioned that it's going to get several touches. And then um, from the written comments, I just like to clarify a few things. You know, round numbers are nice. People like round numbers like 200, like 200 acres of trees. But the port did an aerial survey of this property. And in truth, it's only 90 acres of trees. So let's let's just deal with the facts. It's 90 acres of uh, uh, forest, not 200 acres. And then Kimmy Street will close. So in my opinion, there's no chance of truck traffic going south. I mentioned I did my homework. I called the International Wood Products and 100% of their trucks go north to up Center Street to uh, Tumwater Boulevard. Um, and even then, even it's just like to mention one thing, the city of Tumwater can always say no truck traffic on this street. They can put up a sign and then have uh, officers enforce it, just saying no truck truck traffic going this direction. So that's really up to the city of Tumwater if you if we want additional assurance. And then I'd like to talk about warehouses. Warehouses um, in this area are only visible from the freeway and center street. They're not visible, won't be visible from Tumwater Boulevard. They won't be visible from Bush Middle School because of that uh, large tree buffer around Bush Middle School. I don't dis like or dislike warehouses. They're just a vital part of the way America chooses chooses to live. We shop at Target, we shop at Home Depot, we buy from Amazon and, and many other online vendors and the, the warehouses are necessary for what America wants. And so we're fulfilling that need as well as providing jobs and tax revenue for the city of Tumwater. And somebody mentioned urban sprawl. This is urban infill. It's definitely not urban sprawl. Um, I talked with the uh, folks over at TRPC, and we had a conversation about the Thurston Climate Action Plan, and it talks about urban infill using uh, properties within city limits, uh, so people are not uh, driving down more in new roads. Um, their number one goal is to min minimize emissions from cars and traffic, um, but it also talks about tree preservation, so I can see people's concern about preserving trees. Um, so there's several more touches to this. Uh, the future is uncertain. Um, I guess I could say in summary that this ILA is bound to be uh, fine-tuned some more. And it, again, it's a partnership between the city of Tumwater and Port of Olympia. It's not going to get signed by anybody uh, until and if the city of Tumwater and the Port of Olympia can agree to what's in the ILA. So I have requested a, um, a new pro forma. We also need a cost benefit analysis. I hear commissioners, staff, and city staff clearly stating that this is going to be warehouses. That's what Panettone does. Is there a market for warehouses? And what will they do to or for our community? We failed to do a market study before we bought the Lacey CBC building. And instead of turning into our biggest moneymaker, it is a money loser. We should not make that mistake with this development. We were told Lacey would make us half a million dollars a year, but we were not told about the million dollars in deferred maintenance and repairs that were required. We also did our market study over a year after purchasing the property, and only then did we discover that there was virtually no market for its intended use. We need a market study for the intended use on this pa these Panettone warehouses. There are empty warehouses nearby. Kaufman has warehouses. There are warehouses just down the road on, 80, on the other end of 88th Avenue. There's a surplus of warehouses, empty warehouses in the area. Is there a market? We need to do our homework and understand what we're getting into before we end up with another money loser. Thank you, Commissioner Zita, for uh, those comments. 
So at this time, it's 1146. I'd like to make a motion to uh, table our second presentation, which is entitled uh, Valicia's presentation, entitled uh, New Market Development Agreement, Interlocal Consideration and Approval Process. Valicia, I'm sorry to do that, but we just are totally out of time. Is there, I, I, so I need a second, please. Second. All those in favor of tabling uh, Valicia's presentation on considerations and approval process, please say aye. 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 I also want to point out we did not um, offer the public the second round of public comment that was on our agenda. We owe that to the public. Thank you, Commissioner Zeta. And as chair, I will apologize to the public for not having quite enough time for uh, another round of public comment. Um, be assured that this issue will come back before the Port Commission and we'll be sure to include uh, uh, extra amount of time if need be for a public comment. So at this time, I'd like to bring this meeting to a close. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second, please. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you everyone for a good discussion today. We'll see you next time.